My name is Michael Stevens and I'm a pediatric gastroenterologist at the Mayo Clinic. I'm also a part of the Inflammatory Bowel Disease Program. I'd like to talk about a recent article that was published in the journal Gastroenterology. This project came out of a very large multi-center pediatric project uh, that's spearheaded by a group called ProKids. This initial study looks at children with Crohn's disease. There are 29 centers involved in this study and at this point they've enrolled 1,800 children, 1,200 of which have Crohn's disease. All of these patients in the study are being followed from the time they're diagnosed for years moving forward. And the goal of the study is to identify markers, whether they're genetic, whether they're immune markers, or the types of bacteria colonizing the gut that can predict who's going to have more severe disease behavior. The overarching goal would be to be able to identify when a patient is diagnosed, what therapy is going to be the most appropriate for them to receive. The current, the current study looks at outcomes at one year and compares three different uh, modes of treatment. One group is patients who received a group of uh, medications called anti-TNF therapies. The second group received what's perhaps the most conventional therapy, which is uh, immune, mod immune modulating medications. The third group received neither of those treatments, at least within the first three months. And introduction of those therapies uh, in, in the majority of patients happened, but later in the course of their disease. Because this is an observational study, the treatment choice or the choice of treatment was really at the discretion of the physician. And one of the downsides of this kind of a study would be perhaps uh, patients who received one therapy had more severe disease and that biased the, the choice of the physician. In order to correct for that, they used a statistical technique to pair patients within these three groups who had very similar disease characteristics. So looking at all of the patients and also looking at these subgroups of patients, we were able to establish that patients who got the anti-TNF therapy had an improved outcome at one year. They had a much higher remission rate uh, and they also had some uh, indications of improved growth. In all three groups, all of the patients had improvement or, or overall the patients had improvement in their weight and their body mass index but only in the anti-TNF group did we see improvement in linear growth. In other words, improved uh, accrual of height. So this is a very exciting study where we, we actually can compare treatments in parallel, which is pretty rare in, in clinical trials. It's also exciting because we're looking at patients from the time they're diagnosed and moving forward. This doesn't mean that every single patient or every single child who's diagnosed with Crohn's disease necessarily needs to start on anti-TNF therapy. What we hope is that uh, we will be able to get, garner more information from this study moving forward so we can actually stratify these patients and identify who really does need anti-TNF at the beginning um, versus these alternative therapies.